הקדוש ברוך הוא says in the Gemara Masechet Sanhedrin in Perek Chelik that before Mashiach comes, everyone is going to get a chance. If you do tshuva, good. If not, he's bringing Haman. And Haman's going to make you do tshuva. Meaning, if Am Yisrael does tshuva, good. They'll be able to welcome the Mashiach with open hands, with open arms. Doesn't do tshuva, he's bringing Hitler. And Hitler is going to make you do tshuva. It says that an earthenware vessel in which it will be cooked shall be broken, but if it will be cooked in a copper vessel, it shall be scoured and rinsed in water. This is part of the sacrificial offering that use different vessels, either to carry the, uh, the blood that was sprinkled over there or to put the meat in the different uh, parts of the animal that's being sacrificed. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, if you used an earthenware, like a clay vessel to hold the pieces of meat that you're about to sacrifice, it has to be broken after you finish the sacrifice. And if it was a metal one, you could just purge it, meaning you have to put it into boiling water, then cold water, that's like, that's called agala, which is what people do uh, now in the, for, for preparation of Pesach, if they want to use the same uh, pots and pans, uh, they have to either use agala or libun, which is fire. But the uh, point is that in order to kasher it again, you have to do agala. Now, why is there a difference between the clay pot and the uh, metal pot? Because the Chachamim teach us that once the meat was determined to be a sacrifice, that means that that meat is forbidden for anything else. It's forbidden for anything else, meaning it has to follow the procedure of the sacrifice. If the sacrifice is supposed to be completely consumed as the sacrifice, completely burned, no one's allowed to eat it. If part of it is supposed to be burned, part of it eaten by the Kohen, his family, and so on, no problem. That's what has to happen. If it has to happen, uh, you know, like the uh, uh, Korban Toda, it has to be done that night. You have to eat it that night. You can't save for the next day. Anything that's saved for the next day has to be burned. So that means that that Koban is that way. Each Koban has its own rules. But the key is to understand is that once that meat touches any other food, the Mishnah in Masechet uh, Psachim, uh, in chapter uh, 4, Mishnah 4, chapter uh, uh, Dalet, Mishnah Dalet, says that any food that touches a korban that's holy becomes holy. You have to apply the same rules to that korban, to, to that food, as you do to that korban. So, for example, you have a piece of meat. You're going to make it determined to be a sacrifice. And accidentally, your chala touched it. The chala touched it. That chala has to be, uh, you have to uh, uh, treat it as if it's a part of the korban, meaning the rules that if you have to eat, or burn that korban that night, you have to do the same thing with that, you have to consume that challah that night. Anything that is left beyond that night is called notar. Notar is leftovers which must be burned. So here the uh, Torah is telling us that if this meat was put into a vessel that's earthenware, that uh, the taste the, uh, the juices, if you will, of that meat are absorbed by the earthenware. And therefore, even if you consume or burn all of that meat, there's still going to be some remaining juices and taste inside the walls of the earthenware. Now, since the Torah says they are not allowed to consume that korban past the time, whether it's that one day or two days, depending on the uh, on the korban. But once it's over, once the time slot is over, you're not allowed to consume it anymore. That means that that vessel also becomes forbidden. 
and therefore there's no since there's no way to kasher the earthen ware you have to destroy it you have to break it on the other hand with the uh, with the metal since the metal does not absorb the uh, 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 in the same fashion as the uh, uh, as the earthenware where the pores of the metal they open and close meaning that if you take whatever it absorbed in the food that you cooked in it or the sacrifice that's in it if you put that vessel you put that pot inside boiling water it reopens the uh, pores and releases all of the taste that's in it and it's the reason why you're allowed to take your pot that you used all year for chametz food boil that pot and now you're allowed to use it for pesach now of course that boiling process should be done by a professional someone that knows all of the alachot and not just by you at home if you don't know all the details because many times people will say oh no it's hot water no hot water is not enough it has to be boiling that's also the reason why a person does agala wears a big glove it's a uh, it's a big deal because if it's hot it's not going to open the pores the same way point being here is that we see that there are two types of vessels that are used where's the musar in this aside from the brilliance of the Torah the musar is this we see that in the world there are two types of people Akadosh Baruch who says in the Gemara Masechet Sanhedrin in Perek Chelek that before Mashiach comes, everyone is going to get a chance. If you do tshuva, good. If not, he's bringing Haman, and Haman's going to make you do tshuva. Meaning, if Am Yisrael does tshuva, good. They'll be able to welcome the Mashiach with open hands, with open arms. Doesn't do tshuva, he's bringing Hitler, and Hitler is going to make you do tshuva. So now. There are two types of people. One person, that's an earthenware. One person, that's a metal. The person that's metal, he hears this. He hears about, if I don't do tshuva, if I don't do tshuva, if I don't do tshuva, oh, yeah, yeah, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? Haman, he's going to come after me if I don't do tshuva. That's enough. You already put some heat on him. You put him in some hot water. He's scared. Enough. I'm doing tshuva. Enough. I'm doing tshuva. I promise Hashem I'm going to keep Shabbat. I'm going to protect my bleed. I'm going to protect my eyes. I'm going to give staka. I'm going to learn Torah. Enough. Okay, you put some heat on me. I'm done. Whatever I did in the past, chatanu avinu pashanu. I'm sorry, Kadosh Baruch Hu, I'm going to change. He's like a piece of metal. He's a piece of metal. You put a little heat on him, he's going to change his ways. But some people, what can we do? What can we do that some people are not like a metal? Some people are like the earthenware. They hear this, say, ah, no, come on, come on. Nah, that already happened. World War II, Hitler already came. That's enough. He died already. Oh, you don't think there's more Hitlers on the way? You don't think that Iran wants to be Hitler? You don't think that all types of other countries that sometimes pretend to be our allies don't want to be Hitler? You don't think that the leadership in Israel itself right now, these lefty liberal Zionists don't want to be Hitler. They showed they were best friends with Hitler at the time of the Holocaust. Not best friends in the sense of they were going golfing together, but they did the same thing. Just like the uh, uh, the Nazis, Imach Shimam, killed Jews, the Zionists had opportunities, they also did the same thing. Some they killed, some they sold to, to have experiments done on them. Oh. We can go to town on all the different things that they've done to Am Yisrael. The point being is, some people hear this and say, no, it's not going to happen. Come on, now we have the uh, the, the Iron Dome. It's going to protect us. We have America as our ally. We have money. We have technology. We're, we're even better than the Silicon Valley. We have smart people. We have soldiers. We have illusion have no clue you're gonna risk your end. that's what you have you have no clue you're gonna risk your end. and some people unfortunately have become self-hating jews they hate that they're jewish it's the craziest thing in the world they hate that they're jewish they hate jews more than the nazis they hate jews more than amalek they don't understand what gift they have they were chosen as one of the chosen people but they hate themselves sometimes these people are erev rav they're, they're actually Amalek themselves, 
And sometimes they're just simply clueless, poor you know, victims of, of, of society and what happened out there. So you go and you have an obligation to rebuke, to help, to teach. And sometimes those people right away say, oh, wow, I'm, I have to keep me taught. They do it. But sometimes, nah, come on. I don't want to do it. I like my sins. I like my this. Why is the Kadosh Buhu says, ah, the heat that I put on you is not enough. Oh, you want to be an earthenware? Okay. Then I'll break you. And that's what happens, Rabutai Karim. And unfortunately, a very large number of people that end up doing tshuva only end up doing tshuva after HaKadosh Baruch Hu breaks them, after HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes away their money, after HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes away their health, after HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes away their family, after HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes away their peace of mind, after HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes their reputation, takes their career, takes different things that they hold dear, after HaKadosh Baruch Hu breaks them, then they say, oh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, will you help me? Where were you the last 30 years? Where were you the last 40 years? Oh, I didn't think, I didn't think. Ah, you forced me to break you. Okay, fine. Yalla, come on. Why? I love you. Akadosh Baruch Hu didn't want to break you. He didn't want to cause you all types of horrible things, the cancer and the, the, the other diseases and the financial crisis and the divorce and the hardship. He didn't want to do all of that. But there was no other way to get you to do tshuva until you became desperate and broken, just like the clay. Had you been like the metal vessel, that a little bit of heat, a little bit of truth, a little bit of recognition that anti-Semitism is on the rise, a little bit of realization that your life is on the line every single minute. Had you been like that, you would have done tshuva. Hashem would have not, wouldn't have actually had to put you in a situation where you had to break you. But since you weren't, you had to break you. You had to break you. And don't worry. Broken will happen to everyone who doesn't do tshuva.